Hey guys, welcome back to GQ Design Studio. My name is Gabe and today we're going to be doing a very special holiday edition of these painting classes. We're only going to be using three colors for this painting. First we have cobalt blue and then a bunch of white and then just a little bit of red. And just like always, we're going to be using three brushes. First off, we have this really fat brush right here. As usual, he'll be joining us, and his name is, of course, Megatron! Next up, we have this brush here. It has kind of a pointed tip at the end, and it's a little bit on the thin side, but it's not quite so tiny. And his name is, of course, Ignacio. And finally, we have this tiny little detail brush, and her name is Tinkerbell. We're gonna go ahead and get started by mixing this light blue color right here. And for that, let's get out Megatron. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a big old scoop of this white paint, a big old scoop, and then put it off to the side wherever you have room. And now we're gonna take this blue, and we're gonna mix the two together. We're gonna make a very, very light blue. And you want to mix a bunch of this color because we're going to be using it to paint the entire background of this painting. And now the strategy for this painting is we're going to make really, really, really ridiculously wide brush strokes from one side of the canvas to the other. So we're going to start here in this corner. We're going to go all the way across and we're just going to be filling up this entire canvas with these horizontal, really long brush strokes. So with that same technique, let's go ahead and just fill out the entire canvas here. Now if you're wondering why these blues look so different, they're the same colors mixed, but they're different brands. The one on the left is Blickbrick, and this one here on the right, I use Winsor and Newton. So you can decide which one of these you want to go for and just use that color. We'll also paint the sides of the canvas as well. So we'll go over here and just paint this entire side the same color. And the reason we paint the sides is so when you hang it up on your wall, it looks like a complete beautiful painting and you don't need to get a frame for it. And we'll paint the top as well. And now let's just wait five to 10 minutes. We're gonna let that dry a little bit. Now that the background is dried a little bit, let's go ahead and clean off Megatron completely. You want to get all the blue paint off of him because the next color we're going to be using is pure white. So I have Megatron. I'm going to put him inside the pure white paint. And we're going to start off by doing some measurements. So over here on the corner, let's go about one third of the way up from the bottom of the canvas. And then over here, we'll go about another third up of the way. So we have two little puntitos. Puntito, by the way, is a little point. Punto in Spanish is point, so a puntito is a little point. And now let's find the center of the canvas, and we're gonna go up about four inches from the bottom and then just draw another little puntito. And now our job is to connect these points with a nice curved line like this. And everything below that line, we can fill in with white. So we're still doing the same horizontal brush stroke strategy. And we're just gonna use this to fill up the whole foreground. Let's be sure to wrap the white around the edges of the canvas too. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and retire Megatron off into the water cup. And the next brush we're gonna be using is Ignacio. And the next color we're gonna be using is pure white yet again. And now with this white paint, let's find the center of the canvas. We're going to go to the top of the foreground here. And let's go up about two inches and make another little puntito. And then we'll go up another two inches and draw yet another puntito. Right there. And then we can just go ahead and draw an oval 
And those two points will be the top and bottom parts of our oval. So this oval is going to be wider than it is tall. And it's always better to go a little bit smaller because you can always make your oval bigger, but you can't really make it smaller. Alright, so once we have our oval here, we're just going to take our brush and you see the front of his chest. We're just going to follow through with the same angle and I'm just going to draw a slight angle like this going right up to his chest. That'll be his front leg. You don't want to push down too hard with your brush because then you're going to get the reindeer really, really fat legs. Which is fine if you want your deer to be like super jacked and not skip leg day. But if not, just do it nice and thin, you'll have like a normal looking reindeer. You guys see on this reindeer, we have a little bit of negative space right here. We have that small little blue triangle. For our reindeer, we're just going to draw that negative space. So I'm not really drawing the leg, I'm drawing the negative space. So this leg is right behind it and this one's a lot more straight than the other one. We're going to skip on over to the back of the reindeer and this leg is going to kind of come out from his body a little bit and then go down like this. And I'm just going to make the part right here where it connects to his body a little bit thicker. That'll do it. And now his last leg is just going to go right in front and again we want that negative space. So this one's going to be a little bit more straight. We'll just go straight up into the body. And now it looks like we have like a Star Wars AT-AT just walking through the snow. But we're going to make this look a lot more reindeery. So for the neck and the head, you know how we followed the leg of the reindeer? We followed through with the same angle that the circle was. We're going to do the same thing and we're just going to follow the angle and move it straight back like this. And we'll draw the back of the neck so we have this triangle situation happening right now. And this reindeer's neck is kind of pointed up like this, it's kind of looking up. So we're going to achieve that by drawing kind of like this sideways triangle. We're going to skip a good bit because we want this reindeer to have a nice long neck. And we're just going to draw a triangle right about here. And we'll just round out this part of his head. So that's the basic shape right here, but we're going to work on the contours of his head a little bit. We're going to round out the front of his snout. And then down here, we're just going to add a little bit of a curve to give him a jaw. So now our reindeer has a jaw. And now we're going to do the same thing and give him a forehead. So we're going to come out this way. And then we're just going to come up a little bit. Give him a forehead. So here's the snout. And there's the forehead. And then lastly for the tail, we're just going to come over here near the back. I'm going to angle my brush this way and just draw a little backwards C. And there's his tail. So for the antlers, I'm just going to kind of draw a line, a curved line. I'm going to start about right here and I'm just going to angle my brush a backwards C. That's our first main antler and the second one's going to be lower and it's going to come out way out here. So we're going to do the same thing. Let's just angle out a nice C and make it connect right here. Probably better if we switched on over to Tinkerbell. Alright, and then with our brush we can just draw a couple little lines here. And then I'll draw another little line right here. And then kind of a bigger one right here. And now let's do the same thing on this side. 
Just going to add a little prong right here for the antler. And another one right here. And then finally I'll just give this antler, I mean I'll just give this little reindeer an ear. And it's going to kind of get hidden by the antlers, but it's fine, we'll just draw it back here. And I'm just going to puff his chest out a little bit. If you like the way that your uh, deer looks right now, you can absolutely leave it like that. But I kind of want him to make it like a little puffy chest, so he's a little bit of a proud deer. So I'm just going to come out with his chest a little bit more. There we go. That's the proudest deer you'll ever meet. Now that we have the deer in there, it's time to make some trees. So for the trees, I'm going to get Ignacio back out, put them in some white paint, and we'll start over here with this tree all the way to the right. So I'm going to come down maybe like five inches from the top and about one inch from the side. And I'm just going to do my best to draw a straight line going down. And now you want this tree to be the, a little bit thicker on the bottom than it is the top. And I'm just going to go down a little bit, like two inches over, and I'm going to go about two inches lower than the one that I just painted. And I'm just going to put another one. And I'm going to skip like another inch and go about two inches lower again. Same process. And then the last one is a little bit closer to the deer and it's the shortest one yet. So I'm going to skip about two and a half inches actually for this one. And now we'll repeat those same steps over here on uh, the left side. So I'm going to go a little bit lower than the first tree that we made and still an inch from the edge and I'm just going to draw a nice straight line. And then we'll do another one. This one's actually a little bit taller than the one we just did. Next one's a little bit lower. And then the last one is uh, closer to the deer, but not as tall. For these branches, we're just going to connect them over to the trunk. So I'm going to come out here, push down nice and light, and I'm going to push down a little bit harder as I go so our branches just get a little bit thicker. And I'm essentially just turning these branches into Ys. So I'm just going to have some of these branches come actually hang off the edge of the canvas here. And then I'm going to overlap some of these too because trees and nature overlaps all the time actually. So we're just turning them into Y's. That would be a good time to switch over to Tinkerbell. And then we'll just finish up by drawing some of these other Y pieces to the branches. We'll draw some other branches going on here. And we can actually like point the tops of these trees with Tinkerbell. And there's our trees right there. So let's go ahead and just add little mounds to the bottom of these trees so it looks like, you know, the fallen slow has accumulated down here. So we're just adding these tiny little mounds to the bottoms. And 
And now comes the fun part. We're gonna make all these little snowflakes and we're gonna use a technique that's gonna do a lot of snowflakes all at once, but it also gets kind of messy. So if you have anything on your table, like your cell phone or something, that you don't wanna get paint off of it, you wanna move it off of your table. Cause this part will get messy. What we're gonna do is let's go ahead and take Megatron out and I'm gonna just gonna take a little scoop of this white paint and then I'm gonna put it off to the side and then I'm just gonna grab some water and I'm really gonna dilute this paint so it's really, really liquefied. You want really watery paint. Now you don't want it so watery to the point where your brush is dripping, that's too much water, but we want it very, very liquidy so we can do this next step. So now I have Megatron loaded with white paint and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our brush about six inches away from our canvas and we're gonna just gonna flick it back like this so it creates a bunch of these little uh, snowflakes very very quickly and then you can just load it up with some more and keep repeating this process how much white paint you use is 1000% up to you I'm gonna put quite a bit on there so I'm just gonna keep going around and adding this splatter effect to this painting here. Now we have a winter wonderland, ha <laughs> ha! And finally we can move on to the last step which is to make that bow. And for that we're gonna use a little Tinkerbell. So let's get all the white paint off of Tinkerbell. And the next color that we're gonna be using is the red paint. And for the bow, we're just gonna start in the front of his neck and draw a nice curved line, kind of like a necklace. We're gonna make it connect right about here. All right, once we have that, we're just gonna have two loop-de-loops. So we're essentially drawing bunny ears. One of the ears is gonna come out this way, loop around and it's gonna actually go above the necklace and below it as well, like this. And then we're just gonna connect it. And then the other one is gonna be completely below, so it's kind of like a slanted bow here and we'll just draw another bunny ear or you can think of it as kind of like a teardrop shape and we just want to make sure that it all connects to the same point because that's where the knot is and now there's two big ribbons so I'm gonna kind of start out here and I have a ribbon just kind of blowing in the wind here and again connect to the same knot and then this one's gonna come way out here. And then the wind is also gonna drive it, so we'll go about right here. And then finally, let's just go ahead and put a little red nose on this reindeer. How big this red nose goes is totally up to you. A little bit smaller if you want it realistic, but if you want like it to really stand out, you know, you can make it nice and big. And there we have it. Those are all the steps that you need to know in order to paint this painting right here. You can go ahead and sign the painting on the bottom right corner. These videos take a really, really long time to make and edit. So if you want to support me on the Patreon show, that'd be greatly appreciated. It, that will allow me to make more of these classes possible because these do take forever to edit. Trust me. I mean, look, look at Tinkerbell. She's just on my hand and she moves like... It's not easy. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll have more of these holiday videos coming soon, so don't forget to subscribe so you can see everything. Again, thank you guys so much, and until the next one, stay creative, and Merry Christmas.